Welcome to part two of Power Series. In this video, we'll take a look at some additional examples of determining the radius and interval of convergence when the power series is not centered at x equals zero. So if we take a look at the power series here, notice we have x minus two to the power of n. This tells us the power series is centered at x equals two. Because our formula here consists of exponentials, we'll go ahead and find the radius of convergence by applying the ratio test. So we'll have the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of a sub n plus one divided by a sub n. To determine a sub n plus one, we'll just replace n with n plus one. So we'll have x minus two to the n plus one power all over n plus one plus one, that would be n plus two times three to the n plus one. Now since this is in fraction form, instead of dividing by a sub n, we'll multiply by the reciprocal of a sub n. So we'll have n plus one times three to the nth in the numerator, and we'll have x minus two to the nth in the denominator. Now let's go ahead and simplify this. Notice we have n plus one factors of x minus two in the numerator, and n factors of x minus two in the denominator. That'll leave one factor of x minus two in the numerator. The factors of n plus one and n plus two don't simplify, so we'll have n plus one here, n plus two here. And then looking at the factors of three, there's n factors of three in the numerator and n plus one factors of three in the denominator, leaving one factor of three in the denominator. Now as n approaches infinity, n plus one over n plus two approaches one, so we're left with the absolute value of x minus two divided by three must be less than one in order for this power series to converge. Now let's go ahead and factor out the one-third here. So we'll have one-third times the absolute value of x minus two is less than one. And now we'll multiply both sides by three. So that'll give us the absolute value of x minus two must be less than three. Remember, this is centered at x equals two, so this tells us the radius of convergence is equal to three. Since this power series is centered at x equals two, and the radius of convergence is equal to three, the open interval of convergence would be two minus three all the way to two plus three, which means the open interval would be from negative one to positive five. Now we need to test the endpoints to see if this power series converges at x equals negative one, and x equals five. Let's do that on the next slide. Let's first take a look when x is equal to negative one. So our numerator would be negative three to the nth. Our denominator would be the same. Notice we have negative three to the nth in the numerator and three to the nth in the denominator. Well this would simplify to negative one to the nth divided by n plus one. So now the question becomes, does this converge or diverge? If it converges, we can include negative one in the interval of convergence, and if it doesn't, we can't. This is an alternating series, so let's go ahead and apply the alternating series test as we see here. So we'll take the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n, which is one over n plus one. This does equal zero, that's the first check. Now we need to make sure that zero is less than a sub n plus one less than or equal to a sub n. Well, a sub n plus one would be one over n plus one plus one, or n plus two, and a sub n is one over n plus one. Well, this fraction has larger denominators than this fraction here. Therefore, one over n plus two will always be less than or equal to one over n plus one, so both conditions are met. So this series does converge when x equals negative one. So we can include the endpoint of negative one in the interval of convergence. Now we need to check x equals five. So we'll replace x with five. So we'll have five minus two to the nth, or three to the nth, all over n plus one times three to the nth. Well, this simplifies nicely. So we have the summation of one over n plus one now this looks very similar to one over n, which does diverge, but we can't use the direct comparison test because these terms here are actually going to be 
less than one over n, and if we're trying to show they diverge by the comparison test, we'd need the terms to be larger. While we could use the limit comparison test, let's go ahead and use the integral test where f of x will be equal to one over x plus one. The antiderivative of one over x plus one would be natural log x plus one. So we'll have the limit as b approaches infinity of natural log b plus one minus natural log one plus one or natural log two. Well natural log b plus one approaches infinity as b approaches infinity, so this limit does not exist. Therefore this series diverges at x equals five. We knew from the radius of convergence that the open interval of convergence was from negative one to five, but now we can include negative one while the interval stays open at five. Let's go ahead and take a look at this last problem. To identify where the power series is centered, it must be in the form of x minus c. This tells us the power series is centered at x equals negative one. Because we have a factorial and an exponential part, we'll go ahead and apply the ratio test to determine the radius of convergence. So we'll have the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of a sub n plus one. That'll be x plus one to the power of two times n plus one divided by n plus one factorial. Now instead of dividing by a sub n, we're gonna multiply by the reciprocal of a sub n. So we'll have n factorial here, and then we'll have x plus one to the power of two n in the denominator. Okay, let's go ahead and simplify this. We know n plus one factorial would be n plus one times n times n minus one and so on. And n factorial is n times n minus one and so on. So this simplifies nicely to one factor of n plus one in the denominator. Now if we look at this power on x plus one, this would be two n plus two factors of x plus one. Down here we have two n factors of x plus one. So we have two extra factors of x plus one in the numerator. Now as n approaches infinity, the denominator increases without bound. So this limit is equal to zero. So regardless of the value of x, this limit will always equal zero, and therefore the radius of convergence would be equal to infinity, which tells us that the interval of convergence would be from negative infinity to positive infinity. We do have to be careful here that when we have this limit equal to zero, it does not mean the radius of convergence is equal to zero. It means that it converges for all values of x and therefore the radius is equal to positive infinity, meaning the interval of convergence would be from negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, I hope you found this helpful. Thank you for watching.